Hi everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, this is part three, and let's get started. In this part, we're going to cover Google Advanced Search and Google Translate and how to use the two of them together to get a lot more results and find uh, what I'd like to call hidden information online or the results that you wouldn't necessarily see in a normal search. So to start with this, I'm going to type in, for instance, Ayers Rock. It's in the center of Australia in the Northern Territory. Now we can see a lot of interesting things about Ayers Rock. And over time, Ayers Rock has changed. For instance, in 2020, things about Ayers Rock were very different as to what they were in articles in 2016 and in 2005. But sometimes we can't necessarily see those exact results just by typing in 2016, 2005. So I always like to restrict my time. We can do that and restrict our certain window of time to, for instance, 2016 by having a look at tools, anytime and custom range. Now what this does is it opens up a window that allows me to choose for a search window of time. So I'm gonna search for Ayers Rock in all of 2016's mentions. And this means that I have now searched for Ayers Rock and only restricted my search results to show posts or videos or images or other content online that were uploaded during the year of 2016. Now that's very useful because if you think about it, some of these things we can't do on a lot of other websites. So for instance, if we have a look at Ayers Rock on YouTube, there's a lot of videos we want to filter them down and I want to see videos from 2016. How can I do that? Well, I could click filter, but filter only allows me to view these options here in the upload date. Last hour, today, this week, this month, this year. What if I want to have a look at results from 2016? Well, it's not available, is it? So what I can do is I can go back to Ayers Rock and restrict those YouTube results to 2016. And this is what's called Google Advanced Search. Now Google actually has an advanced search box and you can get there by just typing into Google, Google Advanced Search. And this is a really easy user way, user friendly way of restricting your searches. So if you're into research or if you're at university at the moment or at school and you wanna learn how to get less results but more information that you're actually looking for to really turn down the sound and find out where the music's coming from, I highly recommend using Google Advanced Search. Now let's use that manually. So how do we restrict our search results to a specific website like YouTube? We put in site youtube.com. This is now going to restrict all of our search results to YouTube. And you can see if we scroll down here, everything is now from YouTube. Whereas before it was only, it was from everything on the internet. So different websites and travel sites and TripAdvisor as well as YouTube. And now, we've only restricted our results to being from youtube.com with the mentions of Ayers Rock. And we've also popped that down to 2016 through that time tab as well, which we couldn't necessarily do here. And that's a way to bring the YouTube search engine into Google and use those filters and restrictions of information so that we can get those results. Now, if we wanted to have a look at something else, uh, so for instance, another website, let's have a look at for example, northernterritory.com. So what we can do is we can also restrict our search results from northernterritory.com. So we take the URL from there, we run site, pop in our URL, as rock, and there we have it. So we could restrict all of those search results to, for example, let's have a look at what happened in January 2018 to March 2018. There we are. And this has now popped in all of the results from the northernterritory.com website about Ayers Rock and the results are showing that were only uploaded between the 1st of January 2018 and the 31st of March 2018. So something else that we could do to add to that search string and I'll take it off time so we can get different results is to have a look at any mentions in the URL which is the part up here for northernterritory.com. So we wanna have a look at in URL and we wanna have a look at Ayers, okay. So what we've done here is we've basically listed websites from all of the pages from 
site, northernterritory.com. And in the URL, we've had everything that mentions airs. And we can see that up here. So for instance, there's airs there, and we could see it in some of the other results as well that we're looking at. And this is what the Google Hacking Database essentially is. So we can see some of the recent entries uh, from last month, essentially. So for instance, the SolarWinds hack, we can see uh, the search that was there and we can see some of the details there. We can also have a look at some of the other ones. I find the Google advanced search techniques very useful in investigations or open source intelligence or just general research by being able to really identify the important bits of information that are available online. But the case studies that we have been looking at so far, many of them have been in different languages. So how can we fuse these with different languages? Well, let's have a look at that now. So going back to our idea of doing a site search, site youtube.com, and we'll have a look at Syria because one of our case studies focuses on Syria. This gives us all of the English results about Syria. But what if I didn't want to display my results in English? What if I actually wanted to search for this in Arabic? That's quite simple. So we can do that by going to Google Translate and simply looking for the translation for Syria. Now what we can do is we can put that into our site youtube.com and we'll pop that here. You'll notice when I did that search, the results translated immediately from Arabic into English. The reason why I'm able to do that is I have a plugin called the Google Translate Chrome extension. This is a really useful plugin as it really opens your search results up to a wide field that don't just include the English language. So now that I have that plugin, we can have a look at all of those Arabic results and we can display them in English and we can read them quite easily. This is also useful when we start to combine those search strings on websites. So for instance, here is the CIA government website. I'm going to use this one in a Google advanced search result. So I'm going to copy that URL and use that as part of my research in a Google advanced search string. So what we can do is we can put in site cia.gov. Let's see what that lists. Let's have a look at file type PDF and let's go ahead and put in our Syria translation. Okay, so I put that in and this has restricted all of my Google search results to being from the CIA government website about or mentioning Syria, but in the Arabic text of Syria and all PDFs. I'm using my Google Chrome extension, translate that to English. And I can also restrict that to a specific time. For example, we can have a look at all results from 2018 and then translate it in English as well. So basically what we've done here is we've looked at the CIA government website, which is here, and it does have a search box there as well. So we could even search for Syria in there. It hasn't given us any results here, but if we do the search through Google on the CIA government website for Syria and restrict that to PDFs because PDFs have a lot of interesting information, then we can really easily go through and have a look at all of the information that is publicly indexed and publicly available uh, from the CIA government website about Syria in Arabic. So that's a really useful tool to use in your research and it really opens you up to being able to look at not just the English language but also many other languages in your research. So now that we know how to do that, we can apply the same methodology to the image that we were investigating in the previous sessions, which was from Myanmar. Originally, we thought it was Nigeria. There are indications that it may be a Myanmar village burning. So here's an article uh, that we found previously from VOA News. This was in one of the previous sessions. And we were able to, um, as we did before, just have a look at an image of Earth search of that to see where else this may have been mentioned or other, other places. But in having a look at the search results of this, we can see that they're all in English. With Google Translate, as we can remember from the previous sessions, we can actually change this text. So what I'm going to do is because this article mentions an area called Rakhine State, I'm going to have a look at Rakhine State on Wikipedia and take a translation of that. And I'm going to put that in my text next to the image of Earth search. So now what we've done here is we've done an image of Earth search with the image from this news website of the burning village. It's the same one that we were sent from our friend that mentioned that it was in Nigeria, which is absolutely wrong. And we popped that in there for an image of Earth search. And we've also used the Burmese text, which translates to Rakhine State. 
Now, if we have a look at some of our results, we can see that our news results are in Burmese, so we can translate them. And we can see that, for instance, we have even some Facebook posts. And there's one article here, Destruction of Laka Village Fire. So let's click on that one and have a look at it. Okay, great, that's a really interesting picture. The text is in Burmese, so if we just translate that to English, we can get a little bit more information about it. And that's really interesting because now we have an alternative image that we can even try and compare against our previous image that we were looking at to see if this is the same place. It does look similar, the fire especially, and also where some of the trees are, the type of trees, the type of land, some of the buildings as well may be similar to some of the ones that we see over here. But let's go a step further and see if we can perhaps find more information and add more context to this photo, which originally, if you remember, we just started with this photo and no trustworthy context at all, except after doing an image reverse search, we found that it might have been Myanmar. And now we're really narrowing down and adding more to our intelligence picture or our research picture of what actually happened here and what was happening in that photo. The benefit of having this English translation is that we can see what this originally Burmese text, we can start to have a look at location-based searches in Burmese. So in this article, it says, uh, according to satellite imagery, about 200 houses were found on fire in Laka village in the M. Rauk U township. Now that may be wrong pronunciation, but let's have a look for that. So in reading this page, something that I really like to do is identify where there may be names or place names that I can start to search for so that I can really start to get an idea of exactly where this village is located. And so we can start to get onto the process of geolocation or locating this on a satellite image and then verify the time. So in the caption of this photo, we have this text down here, which gives a, a place name, a village name, a region or a province. And don't forget, we've translated all that into English. So I'm going to translate that back to Burmese and then start selecting the text that I think may be suitable. If we click on the Google Translate plugin again, this pops up and it gives us an idea as to the name of the village and the name of the township. So what I'm going to do is copy that text into a new Google search and see what results we get out of that. Now, all of those search results are in Burmese. So I'm going to translate that to English and it looks like we have a lot of interesting search results. It looks like that fire has been, or that village fire has been well documented as well, which is great. One feature that we can do is have a look at the Google images and see the Google images and try and match them up as well. So we can see that there's a lot of imagery that is available from that town or, or, or supposedly available from that town. And we can possibly start to match that up. For example, this photo, and we even have other ones from the scene or allegedly from the scene as well. So that's really added to the context of what we originally had with that picture, which was nothing. Uh, and, and we originally thought that or, or were told that this was in Nigeria and however, we now know that it is most certainly in Burma. We still have to verify that. So geolocate it to satellite imagery. We still have to identify the exact time. We can do that with satellite imagery as well. But it seems that with all of this content that there is enough content to make a full document or a full brief or research piece on this. And what we've done here is basically fuse together the Google advanced search techniques with the translation techniques as well and using that translate plugin for the, the Chrome extension, which is which has allowed us to essentially hack the translation of this Burmese village and then conduct searches in another language uh, for this area where there would probably be a lot less results if you were to search for this in English. Now we've opened our field of information up a lot more and we have a lot more at our fingertips in terms of knowing what happened, and when it happened and start to verify this event as well. So that's been really useful for that and I hope you've enjoyed that.